Welcome to Small Talk Daily for Thursday, June 24th, 2010. This morning I'm going to go over Small Talk syntax, and I'm going to do this over the course of the next three screencasts. So this is part one, part two, and part three will follow. When you start up VisualWorks non-commercial, and I've done other screencasts that go over installing it on your platform, so let's not get into that. You'll get coming up like this, you'll get a launcher and a workspace. The launcher has things like the menus that you use to get to various things, and the workspace just has an area that you can write code. In non-commercial, it has a number of workspaces that are designed to get you started. Here we have getting started with VisualWorks, non-commercial, so we have links down here to things like the main website, going further down, some FAQs, and then things like a link to tutorials, and a bunch of other links that you can follow. Going over here to overview, we just get an overview of what is Smalltalk, features, again, we talked about some features of the product. The meat of what I wanted to get to here is the introduction. And this is a workspace that was created by Ivan Tomac back in 2003. It's been updated along the way. But since it's covering Smalltalk syntax, really not a lot has changed. So to get started, let's go down. And we want to get through what Smalltalk and what objects and messages are. Let's scroll down through this, get to that first section. Objects and messages. Everything in Smalltalk is an object, and all the work is done by sending messages to objects. That's the first thing to remember. The sequence in Smalltalk is object followed by message. There are different sorts of messages, whether they take arguments or not, but everything is of that form. So here, ABC, string, that's an object, and here's the message as uppercase. Now when I do this, I can actually execute things directly in this workspace by popping up a menu and there's a printed option. So we can see the sending the message as uppercase to the string ABC gives me back the same string, but with uppercase ABC in it. So that'll leave that there. And now we'll scroll down. More examples, dog bark. Now dog's not a real object. I haven't created this object and there's no message to understand. But this is syntactically correct. It's just that if I send this, I'm going to get bark as a new message. And it's going to tell me that it's not correct. I could try to correct it, but there is no object, so let's just cancel that. So these are examples, though, of things you might write yourself, but are not in the language anywhere. There's no car object. I haven't defined a variable pointing to that. So let's get down to some more examples of real things. Number three, squared. So I have the squared message being sent to three. I have ABC reverse. I have 200 factorial. These are all what we call unary messages, meaning we have a, an object and a message being sent to it with no arguments, no possibility of arguments. We just have a single message, so it's unary. So here's three squared, we get nine. These all give you exactly what you would expect to give, and over here, if you're unsure when you're going through this yourself, there are comments. So we can execute those one at a time. We can also execute whole batches of them at once. So I could execute this whole bunch of things, assuming that there were periods following each of these, which there aren't. So it would try to string all these together, three squared, and then it would try to send ABC as a message to the result of squared, which wouldn't work. So I can't do that unless I put periods between them. That gets me to the next point of syntax period is a message terminator. So if I put a period here, that means I'm done sending messages to that object. So 200 factorial, done. No more messages are being sent to that object or whatever comes back from that object. If I wanted to send something else like factorial and then squared, assuming I could actually spell it, we can do that. 200 factorial squared, so that'll first send factorial to 200, get some object back, and then send squared to the result of that. So we just move in the normal left-right order when we're evaluating this. Now, scrolling down further, three kinds of messages, unary, binary, keyword. Unary, as I mentioned, are ones that take no arguments, so three negated, 27 squared. These are what we call unary messages, very sim simple. You can string them together, and the follow-on message will just get sent to the result of the previous message. Binary is mostly syntactic sugar. They're mostly arithmetic in nature, so 3 plus 5. This was added so that you didn't have to write things like 3 plus colon, which I'll get to in a minute, 5. So here this works exactly the way you think it does, 3 plus 5. Print it. One small kicker, though, let's go down here. I'm going to type in something. 4 plus 5 times 8. Now, you might think that you do 5 times 8 first. There is no arithmetic precedence in small talk, so we do 4 plus 5 is 9 times 8 is 72. Straight left, right, no arithmetic precedence. Binary messages, like unary, straight left, right. The precedence rules are such, though, that unary messages will happen first. So if I do this, 3 squared times 
3, I will first square 3 to get 9, and then multiply, well, let's put in a 4 here so we can see what's happening. So 3 squared times 4, print it, you notice you get 9 times 4 to get 36. So that multiplication happens second because unary messages have precedence over binary. Keyword messages, this is the last kind. Here is where we kind of spell out a message. So we say 3 between colon 5 and 10. So the message is between and. And there are two arguments. So for each keyword, there's an argument. You have keyword, argument, keyword, argument. Again, if you try to string things together, you're going to run into the precedence rule of unary comes before binary, binary comes before keyword. To separate these out, you need parentheses. So let's go down here. 3 raised to 17, so that's 3 to the 17th power, so you'll get a rather large number. And now let's scroll down. You can have very long keyword messages, dialog, choose, from list, values, lines, cancel, for. So in Smalltalk, there are no optional arguments. What you have instead is typically people will create series of messages. So they might have dialog, choose, and then choose from list, and then they might have a whole bunch of other messages in between leading all the way up to this one. So in many languages you would have optional arguments, in Smalltalk you'll just have multiple messages. So this is an example of a very long keyword message, one, two, three, four, five, six keywords, six arguments. That's really all there is to that. Now one other thing here, very common thing to do is to have a typo, ABC as uppercase. And if I try executing this, highlighting the whole thing, you'll notice that it offers to correct it for me. If I have it correct, it will fix it to as uppercase because it recognizes that message. Simple things the system can fix, more complicated things you might have to come in by hand and do yourself. Now, other thing I've mentioned in passing a couple times here, every message send returns an object and messages can be combined. And I mentioned this a few minutes ago, 5 factorial squared. So 5 factorial, and then send squared to that. ABC as uppercase, then reverse it. So you just go left, right. And the order is unary messages process first, then binary, then keyword. So the previous expression becomes an argument to the follow-on. And here, you would do 5 squared first because binary has precedence. So 3 raised to the result of 5 squared. So you do 5 squared, then send 3 raised to. So you get 25 is the power that 3 is raised to, and you're going to get a pretty big number. Again here, 3 squared happens first. Then this happens because that's a set of binary messages. And finally, you're going to send between and. So messages are executed from left to right. If you need to change the order of expression because you want to have something like a keyword message execute first before a binary or unary, you use parentheses. So if I wanted to have this 2 squared plus 7 happen in some different order, I do something like this. So I put this in. Notice these two are equivalent, but the parentheses can make it a little more obvious. If you want to actually change the order, use parentheses to do that. Okay, And that's pretty much all I wanted to cover today. I'll follow on this screencast tomorrow with more. Until then, have fun with small talk.